A preliminary report by Yaga Africa has revealed that youth candidacy for the coming 2023 general elections have dropped by 6% since the last elections in 2019. According to the reports, which the group certified accurate as of October 5, 2022, the youth candidacy for the coming election stood at 28.6% as against 2019's 34%, representing a good 6% decline since last year. A further breakdown showed that youth candidacy for House of Representatives plunged from 27.4% in 2019 to 21.6% in 2023. Similarly, the State House of Assembly has also dropped from 41.8% in 2019 to 35.6% in 2023. Joining us to discuss this is Ebenezer Wickener. He is the campaign strategist Change.org. Thank you so much, Ebenezer, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great. Let's just go straight to it. Why do you think there's such a decline, you know, in youth participation? We were all excited. Young people were excited uh, with the not too young to run bill. And of course, it, it was some form of a motivator for young people to get yeah. involved in uh, politicking. But then a few yeah. years down the line, here we are complaining about the fact that young people seem to have dropped off the chart. What exactly happened? Yeah, I mean, very, very good premise, but I think that the, the reasons are very obvious to, to, to all of us. Um, quite a number of parties have continued to leave their nomination forms at a very high, high price. There's also the challenge of money politics, you know, where, you know, you know people who, who go for the national, the national con convention are, are swayed, by, swayed by money to vote one way or the other. You know, there are issues like lack of mentorship. There are issues where, you know, the, the certain elite group, you know, has <laughs> sort of decided to, to stay, stay in various positions at the national or state level, you know, for almost for, for, forever. So you just see a situation where a young person can hardly have a shot because of the fact that, you know, all of these things like money and the whole, you know, money politics and everything just stack against you. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why we've, we've seen a decrease as opposed to an, to an increase. But it's important to also note that we're seeing an increase in civic engagement. Though. Young people are accounting for, you know, a high percentage of new voters, you know, and we're seeing that there are many young people who are interested in the elections more than ever before. At Chain.org, we're seeing a lot of petitions, you know, young people starting petitions on issues around, you know, INEC, the electoral reforms, you know, issues like, oh, the, the ballot paper should now have um, pictures of, of, of candidates and their parties. You know, so we're seeing a lot more young people getting involved in other issues, especially around, you know, civic engagements and even uh, voter sensitization. So, so even though, sadly, we're seeing a decline, you know, based on these factors, I think that there's also a win at the other end where we're going to see. And I, I'm, I actually think that as opposed to other, other um, cycles where we've seen a turnout of um, somewhere about 32% in the presidential elections. I think this year we might have something close to 60% really, because there are many young people who you know, are willing to come out, go out there, get their cards, and be willing to exercise their civic, their civic duty. Yeah. I, li I like where you ended this, but I want to take you back again. How do we stir the pot if we're not in the kitchen? We're always saying that these political parties throw up all kinds of candidates half the time we're, we're in a position where we have to choose between the devil and the, de the deep blue sea. So if we're not really in that kitchen, um, how do mm. we make sure that that change really happens? Yes, we should. We turn up for the elections. That will be a great turn up, you know. But then mm. why, why aren't we part of the decision making to also make sure that the right kinds of people uh, or votable people, you know, mm. are the mm. ones that the parties throw up for, you know, the elections? Indeed, actually, actually, so so the way I, I love to see it, I see it like a spectrum, right? I think that there's a place we used to be before, you know, before not too young to run, and there's a place we are now, and I think that's going to be a, a, a gradual process before we get to the level where we have more young people engaged, you know, in you know being voted for, coming out to run and campaign and become candidates of their parties. Mm. So in, in Yaga's reports, right, Yaga showed that um, the most youth friendly party based on the number of youth candidates that they had in their in their parties agc right and that's and that's interesting right because none the the, the two least you know youth friendly parties were the two major parties the apc and the pdp right so 
it just shows you that we do we still have a long way to, to go right in parties becoming a lot more youth friendly and youth centric and i think it goes even beyond beyond money i think um you know parties even need to start thinking of mentorship how do we even mentor young leaders all across the, the country we've left that job pretty much just for cso's right mm -hmm. so how do parties even begin to mentor young young leaders because if the older generation will pass down leadership who will they pass it to you know, I think that even though we're seeing some progress in the mainstream parties, I think a lot more still needs to be done. And so that spectrum, you know, we still have a way to go, but we're not where we used to be before. And I think that that progress with, with much effort would eventually get there. Yeah. Um, still looking at what um, the report has to say, the Northwest, if we look yeah. closely, uh, has the highest yeah. youth candidates, um, especially mm -hmm. for the 2023 elections. Um, now, yeah. what does the North or the Northwest understand that the rest of the regions need to, you know, key into or borrow relief from? What do you think it is that, you know, these guys are, you know, cashing in on and we're yet to understand the secret? Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the Northwest seems seems to be, you know, seems to be a region that is really politically active, and we're even seeing that trickling down to even the younger generation. Um, I think that generally, you know, it does it does appear that, you know, the the northern part of the country seems to, you know, be more inclined into the policies of, of the country versus the south. Even though I strongly believe that, you know, these coming elections will rewrite a whole lot of those narratives. So I've seen a lot of act activity and action, you know, on all angles, you know, from all political, from all geopolitical zones. You're seeing people all, all active and getting involved. But generally, you know, the North does seem to have that more inclination, you know, towards the politics of the country and the national politics. And I think maybe that's that's why we're seeing that um, figure there. Um, the the Southwest is picking up too, right? So the Southwest is also picking up. The Southwest is picking up. I think that as time progresses, we'll see a lot more engagement. I just think we need to give it time, right? And I think time pretty much heals, heals everything, and time pretty much gives us that room to, to grow. And so at, at Chain.org, one of the things that we're doing is that we're trying to build movement accelerators. Um, so we have two programs uh, focused on women and youth. Um, one of them is called She Creates Change. The other is called We Create Change. And we're trying to see how we can even get people from all parts of the country to start thinking about even their community. How do you think of a problem, come up with a solution, start a petition, and rally around your community to even solve that problem? And so we're beginning to see how young people from all across the country, you know, applied for the We Create Change, you know, um, application. And we're having the trainings and programs just to get people into that mindset. Because when they start caring about social issues, I think it's easier to make that transition from social to political. Once they begin to care. But once people don't care even about the drainage, you know, outside their house or the refuse dump close close to the market, you know, it's difficult to make them understand why they should care about politics. But I think once we go from that social, you know, angle, and that's what we're trying to do, I think we'll get to that point. So all across the country, you know, north, south, east, west, people and young people will generally care about politics. Yeah. Let me query a few things that you've said, of course, um, you sure. know, and, and this is some of the things that Yaga also re referenced to, you know, expensive party tickets, you know, money politics, et cetera, et cetera. We've seen sure. young people in this country. I mean, I, I, I make bold to say that President Buhari in his first coming had people give as low as 100 naira to support his campaign. Mm -hmm. We're seeing yeah. also uh, a phenomenon that's, you know, blowing across the country with the Pital B people and, and the obedience. We're seeing that people s are supporting, you know, this man. But why can't yeah. we get that same support, that galvanizing attitude within young people for young people? And I'm not in any way mm. trying to campaign against anybody, but I'm saying young people need to stand up for themselves. And if we're doing this for the guys in the old boys club, why can't we do mm. that for ourselves? Exactly. I mean, you also look at things like Big Big Brother. People have references like Big Brother, you know, how young people vote for, for their candidates. Several things, football, people are willing to spend money on betting and everything. I think it's a values thing, to, to be honest. I think it's a value system. And I think that even just generally as a society, we need to realign our values and begin to teach people a lot more about, you know, civic leadership, teach people about the fact that they have a responsibility to their, to their country, the fact that leadership should be everyone's business, shouldn't be just for the politicians, you know, it should be something everyone is caring about. I think it's just a values thing. And, you know, I think that, again, I think it's a work in progress. <laughs> I don't think that 
I don't think that we're as bad as it used to be a few years ago. I mean, NSAS really was just one of those ways where you could see that the next generation actually can come together and put themselves together and make a change, right? And begin to speak up and let their voices be, be heard, not just nationally, but internationally. So I think that, you know, it's a, it's a process. But just generally, we need to look at our value system and ensure that even as young as basic school, you know, we need to teach people about civic leadership, the fact that they, they, they have a role to play in their society and have a role to play in whatever their country becomes. So I think it's a, it's a value thing. So it's not something we can just solve by saying, you know, everyone, go vote for X, Y, Z candidates. You know, you take a time, take a while for us to get to that level. Yeah. Still talking about value systems here. Um, yes, if, if, we, if we say that it's a value thing, then does it mean that maybe the, the priorities of the 2020 or the, the, the New Day Nigerian young person is what? Because mm. I'm wondering, if our priorities is to buy things or give money mm. to people who sit in a room for 30 plus days, walk around, eat mm. noodles, and just do all kinds of things. If that's where our yeah. priorities lie and we give them money still, out of the monies that we complain that we don't have, then what yeah. do we need to, to do that would steer our priorities in the right direction? How do we reprioritize or reprogram the minds of these young people? Um, to, to amazing go, you know, amazing right question, way? yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think first, very easy, I think people need to even understand that government can work. I personally do not blame people who look for escape, like, you know, football and whether it's Big Brother Nigeria, any of these things that people are often just looking for, comedy. I mean, you look, go to Nigerian Twitter or on Nigerian Instagram, it's just full with, with comedy, right? Because of just the sorry state of our country, right? There's a flooding right now and there's very little government, you know, attention on that. There, I mean, there's just so many things happening everywhere and people are often looking for an escape. And I think once we begin to make people see that government can work, and that not just politicians, but people in, in office, public leaders can be accountable. I think it's just that accountability factor. That dis that, that's what's leading to that disconnection. You know, so people would rather spend their money in doing something else or spend their money trying to jump out from the, from the country, right? But I think that once people see that government can work and that they can hold leaders accountable, they can vote you in, vote you out in four years if you don't, if you don't do the right thing, I think that will, then will begin to feel a lot more connection. So I think the priorities now are mostly like in escape forms. How can people escape from the tragedies, from the challenges that we see in the country, and how can we really make government to work? Once we begin to make government to work, I think everything will matter. Let's talk about momentum now. Um, we've seen, like I said, I want to make reference again to the social media movements. We've seen the articulate, um, sure. articulated people. We've seen the obedience. Sure. We've seen the conquerors. Uh, we've seen the bat movements. These are somewhat of momentous, but we also see that there are um, you know, useful efforts in most of these camps. But just as you, you yeah. made mention of the 2020, October 20 situation, which was the NSARS, it seemed to have died yeah. down. How are we certain that we can build and sustain the momentum that young people are feeling, the, the emotions, all the burst of, you know, sentiments that we're seeing today? How are we certain that we can sustain that to 2023 and not again have to see the kind of voter apathy that we experienced in 2015 and 2019? Amazing, amazing question. And, and I think that that's, that's why, so before I answer the question, that's one of the reasons why Chain.org you know, focuses on, on democracy beyond the ballot. You know, most people only remember that they have public leaders when it's you know, another four year cycle to, to vote and campaigning and everything. But I think change the up tries to engage people on the day to day. You know, what is whether it's the budgeting, whether it's you know there's a new loan or there are repatriated funds, what are the everyday issues that affect the everyday Ni Nigerian, you know, from every part of the country, and how can they be involved in those issues? So I think that we'll be able to sustain the movement if we're able to move beyond just this this 2023. We need to move beyond just you know the fact that it's February, March, we're voting for a new president and new, and new governors and senators. So the fact that even when people get in there, how do we engage them on the day-to-day? -day, you know, so moving beyond just who you're voting for, the party you're voting for, you know, accountability on the day-to-day, -day, asking the important questions and asking them without bias or without sentiments to someone from your region or someone from your party, but just being, you know, just... Just being honest with ourselves that okay, this is this is this is the amount of money we have. You know, why are we spending on X, Y, Z, and how can we make our country better? I think just that day-to-day -day engagement, you know, will help to make things better. And I think that's the only way we can sustain this whole this whole thing. I don't think the momentum the momentum from NSAS died. I think it kind of like metamorph 
metamorphed into you know what we have now with the registrations and people getting involved with elections and everything and i think that if we want to keep this movement going you know and not just kill everything we need to first ensure that elections are free and fair that when, when people actually come out to vote you know their votes count and even when the eventually that emerge you know they become accountable to the people they don't just lock up and you know <laughs> and just and just get get lost Right now, they are moving all across the country, engaging people at stadiums, you know, asking questions, making promises. But when you eventually get in there, would you still be willing to answer questions? You know, so if you know in a situation where a president cannot have a media chat for eight years, that's, that should never be happening in 2022. You know, so we want a situation where people are accountable to, to the people who voted them in and are able to keep the conversation going. That's the only way we can keep this working. Finally, Change.org yeah. and the young people that work with you. Is this a promise on national TV that you're going to continue to help young people hold the feet of politicians to the fire so that we can see the change that we desire? Not just politicians, really. It's, leadership, it's public leadership everywhere, right? Every nook and cranny. Uh, Change.org Nigeria continues to work with young people, women, young people, especially those who seem to not have a, have a voice. Change's mantra is that you know, people need to be given a, a voice such that they can speak and see change happen. And, you know, the work that change is doing to engage the National Assembly, ensuring that we have a stronger petition system so that people start petitions online. It doesn't just end with signing online, but then there's offline action to follow up and lead to, to change. So, yes, change at all. I mean, it's a promise that, is, that has been there <laughs> even before I would even say anything. There's been a promise online, and anyone who's here can visit change at all, you know, to learn more about the work and start a petition about an area you, you care about. And there's so many petitions on the platform right now addressing so many issues around the elections and human rights and education. Do well to, to, to check it out and add your voice to it. Yeah. Benita Wikina is the campaign strategist for change.org. Always a pleasure to have conversations with you, Ebenezer. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so for much. coming on the show. And that's it on Plus Politics tonight. Tomorrow we'll be back talking for development on the biggest stories in the political scene, especially in Nigeria. I'm Mary Anakon. Have a good evening. <laughs>